You know, as amateurs in those first 7-Eleven years, we had to fight, we thought, for everything that we got. Um, and it's just, that's what bike racing should be. There's three things back then that were super important to a racer after the race. The bed could be horrible, the food could be horrible, or cold shower. But we'd always get two of the three things. It would be a cold shower, and we just learned right on, it was a cold shower. Hey, bed's fine. You know, it's kind of a cot, but it's fine. They're going to rage in the kitchen, and they would rage in the kitchen. Descending and the camber pops from camber to camber, so you get the weightless in between, just pushing in, pumping from one to the other, and snowboarding. This is my favorite terrain in America. It's just a lot of these hills going up and down, no one really out here. Well, I'm able to spend a lot of time in Italy riding, but it's fun to come here and really see nothing for hours and hours. have fun with the guys and everyone's a really good bike handler which isn't a great big deal until you hit cattle grates at 45 miles an hour like we've been doing here. It just goes on and on. I mean we've seen so many different contrasts today. You drop down and you're in that marine layer and it's Jurassic man. It just goes back like a million years. Beautiful, but there's one that one steep pitch that I was like, I'm gonna walk this. Yeah. No, I thought about the, it. I thought about the, it. My back was hurting. That was the, my Oakleys rattled off my helmet. Like tested, They're gone. Tested. I had a really sweet day. I had a really sweet day. Big, yeah. good day. Yeah, good day. We seen forests, tiny little roads, massive drops, 20% grades, gravel. Giro d'Italia winners, it's all magic. I think the best riding in America is what we did today. It's gorgeous, it's so much like Italy. You know, my legs feel like it's in Italy, mm. other than lack of coffee at strategic places <laughs> <laughs> along the way. So the Alpe d'Huez stage, how do you look back on that as a, as a day in your life? You know, it was the stage I always wanted to win, and you usually fell flat on it. My grand plan was to tack on Alpe d'Huez somewhere 
but a break went on the Quad de Fer after we had already done two passes before it, and my legs just went. So I just tried to be kind of cool, you know, when my switchback came with about five Ks to go. When I should have shifted a gear and stood up and stretched, I just kept it in the same speed, but a much harder rhythm, trying not to make it look like I was going harder. It opened a slight gap on Vona. It just made him suffer trying to close it, and he couldn't. And this is a ride and a half. The man of the day, there's no doubt who that was. Andy Hampson has pulled off the ride of his life here. So getting that as my one stage was really, really fantastic. You know, when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was ride my bike to explore. And that's really all I'm doing right now. It's just so cool being kind of beaten on the head a little bit from riding. The conversations that come up, no one told me about their job today. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's just something I really appreciate about cycling. There's a lot of riding to be done.